Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome once again to our Tuesday night study. Pray that you all had a great day today. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be back with you all again. Uh, as we go through the study tonight, I just give God praise for all of you and love you all so much. Thank you all for your prayers, how you all been praying for us, uh, you know, keeping us lifted up. Um, in the midst of everything, I just want to say to you that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I don't care what the circumstances, what the consequences, the situation, um, or even what the deal is, the Lord is good and the Lord is faithful. Amen. And I yet today have found no fault in him. Amen. I found him to be everything that he said that he is, everything that he said that he is, and he'll do everything that he promised he would do. Uh, I know you all missed us on uh, last Sunday. Amen. Um, my wife and I, we were dealing with uh, COVID. And uh, nevertheless, I want you to know, amen, we're up and going. And, uh, you know, it, it was what it was. But I just want to say to you all, um, <clears throat> if, and, and we're going into the study tonight, but I just want to say this to you all, uh, based on experience, what we experience. Um, what other people, other people, what other folk experience may not be your experience for whatever. You may be dealing with the same issue, but your, like a lot of us dealt with COVID, all right? A lot of us dealt with COVID and some people experience with COVID was more severe than others. And I'm not trying to minimal, you know, to minimize, minimize your experience or to, or to uh, make you think that, you know, uh, you know, yours was minimal. But what I, what I do want to say is, um, it it doesn't matter what it is that you're going through what you are confronted with, God is always faithful. God is always good. God is always merciful. He's always kind. So your your you know your experience may be be more severe than others. Um, but nevertheless, God is still good. God is faithful. But I learned in the process of all of this. If you, if when you are attacked and immediately your first train of thought is to think the worst, then I'm telling you, you're going to prolong your, uh, you're going to prolong your stay in that situation. And I'm saying all that to say this, uh, we were diagnosed. Um, I'm telling you, I didn't miss a beat. Uh, had a little sore throat. Um, minimal levels of that. Uh, dealt with the little, I think was the maybe. I, to be honest with you, I just counted as when when I noticed some some symptoms. I, I it, it affected me just as though I was having a cold. I was catching a cold. And about a day afterwards, I was done. That was it. I was up, day or two rather. I was up and ready to go, not missing a beat. So I'm saying all that to say this. If you, if, if, a, a lot of things you got to get control of it in your mind first. Because however you allow it to affect you mentally, 
in a lot of cases, that's exactly how it's going to affect you physically. So I just, I said all that to say this, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're dealing with, man, don't let fear grip your heart. Because if you listen, I'm, if you listen to CNN news, I'm not pro Fox, I'm not pro NBC or anti CNN or anti Fox or anti um, NBC. But I'm telling you, if you listen, if you listen to a lot of newscasts, man, they make you think everybody's dying. They make you think everybody is dying from this thing and the devil is alive. Everybody is not dying. You know, everybody is is not I'm not I'm not saying that there are not folks that are suffering. I'm not I'm not trying to belittle that. But what I am saying is this. A lot of stuff that's being projected and pushed and is is fear mongering. It won't they listen, they tr I don't know why, but it's like they're trying to create a level of fear in the people so that the people will be paralyzed mentally to the point that they're in a state of panic. The devil is a liar. That's not, listen, that's not the way of the believer. Those that believe in God, those that trust in God, and yet there are believers that have died. There are many great men and women that have died uh, from COVID, and I'm not trying to uh, belittle that either. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to get you to live carelessly, but I am trying to get you to live without fear. Amen. I pray that you got that. Nevertheless, <clears throat> I will study tonight. We're going to pick back up uh, what we left off last Tuesday night, talking about conquering uh, to conquer, conquering to conquer. And I just, I just want to say to you tonight, I love you all. Praise God. I'm excited about being able to sit down with you again for another study in the word of God. Uh, it's, you know, it's to me, I'm going I'm to tell you the truth. It's been a beautiful week, week and a half, or however long they say this thing was. It's just been a beautiful time for me. Uh, I hadn't, God is just so good. Nevertheless, let us pray and then we're going to get right into the word tonight. Um, it's a beautiful word. It's a powerful word. Uh, it's a refreshing and a reviving word tonight. I do believe, amen, that all of us are going to be blessed through the word. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor once again for this time that you have allowed us to come to share in your word together. We just bless you, Holy Father. We just praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. We are honored that you have given us the privilege to sit down and uh, teach your word, the privilege of just having the opportunity just to partake in your word, just to hear your word being taught not me doing the teaching, but the Holy Spirit teaching me so that I can teach. And Lord God, today I release myself into your hands. I say to you, Father, have your way. Use my, my frame. My body is in your hand. I commit myself into your hands, my mind, my spirit, my will. God, my intellect, I, I commit into your hand tonight. And I'm asking your Holy Spirit, to have your way. Bless your people as they hear it. May they be strengthened. May they be edified. May Jesus be exalted and God the Father be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm excited, church. I'm excited. 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 I want you to go again to the book of Revelations, chapter number uh, six, beginning at uh, verse number two, the very last clause of verse number two, amen, of the book of Revelations, uh, the book of Revelation, rather, um, 
Revelation chapter 6, verse number 2, the very last clause. And I want us to begin reading there. Amen. Praise God. Lord, y'all, I'm telling y'all, when I discovered this, this clause in Scripture, I know it's talking about what John saw in heaven. But when I saw, when that, when I when I saw this, it grabbed my spirit. This was sitting in watch night service, uh, doing praise and worship when I just when I when it grabbed me, and it had not let me go yet. I'm telling you, this 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 right here, man. This right here is so powerful. Glory be to God. You said, preacher, why wow, you you uh, you go uh, listen until. Until it get out of my spirit, I gotta, I got it has me, it has me energized. Amen. Uh, the, I'm gonna just read. I, well, let me read the entire verse, but I'm, I want to highlight uh, the last clause. Revelation chapter number six, verse number two, and I looked and behold, a white horse, and its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he came out conquering and to conquer. And he came out conquering and to conquer. Uh, listen, that, that that just that just that phrase right there. Uh, it's a sila moment to me. It's a sila moment to me. Meaning that that's a phrase that that you don't you just don't want to run. You just don't want to read it and just you know, just just run over it in your reading and keep on moving. But that's a, that's a, that's a that's a clause. I believe that we need to pause and really think about that. What it just said: we are conquering in order to conquer, meaning that 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 there is something greater than our initial battle battle. There is something greater for us to conquer than our first encounter. Amen. There, I, I pray that that makes sense to you. Th there is something greater. It's, there is always something greater for us to accomplish in the kingdom. There is always something greater for us to to accomplish in the kingdom. I think I stated last Tuesday night we are going from victory to victory to victory to victory. Uh, the expectation of God is always uh, for us to be victorious. Amen. The expectation of God is always for us to be victorious. And I want to I want to read a couple of more verses, and then I want to go to the meat of the verse that I want us to focus on tonight. Uh, John four and four. Little children, you are from God. You are born of God. You are made of God. You are the children of God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he that's in the world. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. Uh, for he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. The first thing we need to remember when we're going out conquering to conquer. We need to always remember that the greater one dwells on the inside of us. The greater one dwells on the inside of us, regardless to what's coming against you. Always remember that the greater one dwells on the inside of you. Your perspective should not be... Uh, outward perspective as to looking at the foal that's coming against you or the enemy that's coming against you but your perspective first of all should be inwardly okay my 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 perspect my inward perspective is this he that is in me is greater than anything that's going to ever come against me he that is in me is greater that, than anything that's going to ever come against me. Please get that in your spirit. He that is in you is greater than anything that will ever come up against you. Stamp that. 
stamp that on the on the on I'm telling you on the forefront of your heart and your thinking. He that is in you is greater than anything or anyone that will ever come against you. Settle that within yourself, okay? Amen. Now, 1 John 5 and 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. Listen at this now. 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5. I'm reading 4 and 5. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. I pray you got that. For everyone, not some folk, not the prophet, the evangelist, the apostle, the preacher, or the pastor, or the teacher, not just of those that's in the fivefold ministries. But he says, for everyone who is born of God overcomes the world. Everyone. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The prophet, the pastor, the apostle, the teacher, and the evangelist, they are not the only one that has the faith of God. They are not the only one that have the faith of Christ. You, that's born of God, you also have been given the spirit of faith. Not just, not just natural human faith, but I'm talking about you have been given the faith of God. Glory be to God. So I think it's in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Talks about having the same spirit of faith. You know, I believe, according as it is written, I believe and therefore we speak. I also believe and therefore I speak. Glory be to God. Amen. Having the same spirit of faith. What, what, what same spirit of faith? The same spirit of faith that God has the same spirit of faith that Jesus has, the same spirit of faith that the apostles had, the same spirit of faith that the prophets had. Amen. You, those of us that are born of God, we have been given that same, that same uh, spirit of faith, and that's what that's the type of faith that causes us to overcome. Amen. That's the type of faith that causes us to have the victory. Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who is it? I'm reading verse number five. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? You want to know who overcomes the world? You, you want to know who overcomes the world? The person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the one that overcomes. The one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You have been given the power to overcome if you believe that. Because, listen, your power and your ability to overcome, it comes through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believing that he is the Son of God and because you believe that he is the son of God, back up to John 4 and 4, 1 John 4 and 4, it says, okay, if you believe that Jesus is the son of God, then listen, listen at what he says. Little children, you are from God and have overcome the world. In other words, he's saying the same, listen, the same, the, the same way, amen, that we believe that Jesus is the son of God. Amen. We also have to believe also that we ourselves we are born of God. We are children of God. Listen, the Spirit of God dwells on the inside, on the inside of us as well, and also give us, Amen, access, Amen, uh, to the ability or to the anointing to overcome. Glory to God. I stated it last week, Amen. We have been anointed to overcome. 
Amen. We have been anointed to overcome. The ability to conquer. The ability to conquer is your inheritance. Amen. The ability to conquer is your inheritance. Uh, revelations. Listen to this. This is this is oh my god! I, I came. I, I read this uh, uh, earlier this week, and Revelation three and twenty one, and this is Jesus. Well, this is John. Uh, John um, saw this in the vision, and and this is one of the messages to the seven churches, and this is the church. This is the message to uh, the church of Laodicea. And I don't want to go into all of that because I, I want to focus on the uh, uh, the word conquer here, okay? Overcoming and conquering. <clears throat> Look at what uh, the message that Jesus gave the church at Laodicea. He said, the one who conquers, listen now, the one, this Revelation chapter 3, verse number 21, the one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Glory be to God. Listen, those of us that won't wimp out, those of us that won't quit, those of us that won't just, you know, just 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 lay down, amen. He said, listen, if if listen, if you are willing to go out conquering to conquer, he said, I'm gonna grant you the privilege of sitting down with me on my throne. We gotta wanna win. Because listen, because there's a prize at the end of this, people of God. And you said, preacher, why are you talking about me? What is it that I'm supposed to conquer? You're supposed to conquer this life of yours. You're supposed to conquer uh, and overcome every challenge. You are supposed to, listen, You listen. God have given you, God have given you an assignment for you to complete, right? He has given you an assignment to complete and you have to be willing, amen, to, 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 to fight against anything, any opposition, listen, by what, I don't care how it comes at you, you got to be willing to conquer every opposition that's trying to prohibit you from, listen, from finishing uh, the mandate that God have assigned to you. Whatever it takes for you to win, you got to be willing to do that. Glory be to God. You got to be willing to fight it, church of God. You got to be willing to stand. Uh, Timothy said, uh, 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 we are to fight the good fight of faith. We are to fight the good fight of faith. And the good fight of faith is the type of faith that overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What faith? The fight of faith, the good fight of faith. Glory be to God. That's how we overcome. That's the fight, man. To maintain your faith in the midst of opposition. To maintain your trust. To maintain your confidence. To maintain your word of confession. To maintain your declaration. To maintain your decree. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what opposition come. Don't you change. If you've been, listen, if you've been decreeing the word of God, I don't care how severe the attack comes, do not back off of your declaration of faith. You hold fast to that. You hold fast to that. And, and, and if it take you, praise be to God, having to get some reinforcement, hallelujah, you surround yourself with like-minded believers. Amen. You surround yourself with like-minded believers that's going to touch and agree with you concerning this matter. 
Amen. And the and the, and the group of you, the two of you, the three of you, how many people you 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 get in agreement with you? I've learned it's not it's not. Listen, I don't mean to sound negative, but I'm telling you, be very selective about who you surround yourself with when you listen when you're engaging in spiritual warfare, because sometimes what you see in spirit law. Sometimes what you see in spiritual warfare and what the Lord allow you to uh, get a glimpse of, what you see a lot of times, sometimes what you see, if you are not built up in your most holy faith, what you see will cause you to fear. And because, and if you're not rooted and grounded in your faith and those that are around you, and if, and if the Lord open up their eyes and they can see uh, the attack that's coming against you, or they can hear of the attack that's coming against you, if they are not rooted and grounded, listen, they, they will begin to be fearful, amen, and you have surrounded yourself with a group of people, amen, that's, that's you know, that their level of fear is greater than their level of faith, and I'm telling you, uh, you got to know who your allies are. You got to know who you align, who you are aligning yourself with to do spiritual warfare. You just don't want to go into spiritual warfare with just anybody. People of God, hear me. You, you, you listen. If you, if you weak, why will you go and get someone that's on the same level that you are, or even weaker than you are, and say, "Come on, let, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, come on now, we, we, we going, we going up against a, 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 you know, a foe here, amen, that have been going out conquering." And therefore, amen, you got to be prepared spiritually. You got to surround yourself, man, with someone with spiritual capabilities and understand and understand, listen, that, that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of stronghold. You got to know that going in. And you and and you got to know that so the people that you are dealing with, the people that you are aligning that you are aligning yourself with, Amen. Somebody need listen. I don't. Somebody need the first thing you need to do. Listen. The first thing we can do, we just not gonna just go pray. The first thing we can do, we are gonna grab the word. We go grab the word of God because that is our weapon. That's that's what we use. So therefore, if, if we're going up against a, a, a you know a vulnerable foe, then we gonna listen. We are gonna have to get the word of God to deal with this issue, to deal with the thing. And and the minute someone, if you listen, if you get someone in your corner and they want to start complaining, saying, "Yeah, I remember this person dealt with that," and, and no, you don't listen. Excuse me, Mister or Ma'am. But I don't need you in this battle with me because you looking at what that person encountered, you looking at what this person had to deal with, you looking at their outcome in a negative sense. I don't want to hear about that. I want to know, amen, what's my, listen, I want to know what's my right, what is the promise of God concerning what it is, glory be to God, that I'm dealing with. What have, what is it that God have said concerning what it is that I'm dealing with? That's the first thing. That's the first thing. If you're going out conquering the conquer, you need to know what God has said about this thing that you know that you're dealing with. Once you find out what God has said concerning this thing, once you find out that it is your it is a part of your inheritance for you to have victory over this thing, for you to overcome this thing, and God have you have seen in scripture. Glory be to God that, okay, this is how, and this is what God says, and this is what, this is my, listen, this is my foundation. This is the sword that I'm I'm using. This is the weapon that I'm pulling out to fight with, the promises of God concerning this matter. And because God has said, I am to overcome this thing, I am to conquer this thing, therefore now I'm going into attack mode. Oh, my God. I'm going into attack mode. Why? I'm going into attack mode because God says I am supposed to be victorious 
in this circumstance. All we need is, listen, all we need, if we can get us, if we can get a promise from God to solidify our position of faith, if we can get a promise of God in scripture to solidify our position, I'm telling you, victory is yours. Victory is yours. Glory be to God. And I stated earlier, uh, <clears throat> I stated earlier about um, be careful who you surround yourself with. Uh, glory to God. Who you surround yourself with, and who who you who's your who's your ally? Amen. Who's your ally? Because if you go to uh, if you go to Second Kings chapter number six, uh, dealing with Elijah and the king of Aram, Amen. How he was coming up against Elijah or Elisha, Elisha rather, Amen. How he was coming up against Elisha because it looked like every time you know he planned a strategy, Amen, to defeat the uh, uh, the people of God. It was like, Amen. According to scripture, it was like the man of God was in his chambers. But he was writing out his strategies or advising his, uh, him and his counselor was strategizing. It was as though the man of God was in his chamber hearing everything, amen, that, that you know, that they were saying, right? The king of Aram was saying. And therefore, amen, he decided, listen, we got to put a stop to this. I'm paraphrasing. But you read it in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 6. You, you, you see where, man, they decided, listen, that we're going out against, we're going out and we're going to we're going to capture Elisha, okay? Elisha's servant saw the armies coming against them. The army had already, listen now, they sent out an army to besiege a city to capture one man. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Holy Ghost, you got to have me compose myself. They sent out an army to besiege a whole city, to capture one man. Elisha's servant saw the army. 